Have you ever wondered who was the brains behind the most well-known watch company in history? Hans Wilsdorf, who was born in the late 1800s and became an orphan at a young age, forever altered the face of watchmaking when he established his watch firm in 1905. As time passed, this business adopted the name Rolex. With a clear vision, innovative concepts, and a brilliant grasp of marketing, Hans Wilsdorf created Rolex to become the most recognizable brand in the industry, valued today at around $8 billion. Rolex's achievements have unquestionably benefited the watchmaking industry as a whole, from introducing the first waterproof wristwatch to creating the movement architecture that modern automatic watches still rely on. But there is so much more to the story, and believe me, you will be amazed. The journey was not easy at all, and I'm here today to reveal the details. I am sure they will make your jaw drop. Starting from his early life, Ferdinand and Anna Wilsdorf's second son, Hans Eberhard Wilhelm Wilsdorf, was born in Bavaria, which happens to be in Germany, in 1881. He was sent to boarding school at the age of 12 after becoming an orphan, where he obtained a good education. Hans Wilsdorf's passion for languages proved to be crucial, and his fluency in French, English, and his native German made it easy for him to work overseas. Moving forward, in the year 1900, Hans Wilsdorf started working in La Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland, for Canot Corton, an exporter of Swiss pocket timepieces. Early exposure to selling watches internationally was probed to be vital to Hans Wilsdorf's professional success. After that, Hans Wilsdorf learned of the nearby Swiss town of Bien, which is home to the watch movement manufacturer Egler, when he was living in Switzerland. Despite the existing hate for wristwatches among men, Hans Wilsdorf saw them as the future of watches, and Egler was producing miniature ebauches, in other words, unfinished base movements, with lever escapements. In the year 1903, Hans Wilsdorf moved to London, England, to work for yet another watch manufacturer. The Wilsdorf & Davis Company was created in 1905 after he teamed up with his brother-in-law, Alfred James Davis, and believe me, that was just the beginning. Their business focused on exporting watches around the British Empire, including wrist and pocket models. However, as Hans Wilsdorf noted in the story of Rolex, a 1948 publication, a wristwatch was regarded a joke in those days. Can you believe that the few people who wore them were made fun of? People claimed that a watch and such a tiny, fragile mechanism couldn't resist the forceful hand and arm motions. Hans Wilsdorf ignored the critiques because he was confident that the wristwatch had a magnificent future before it and continued to follow his goal of seeing wristwatches replace pocket watches as people's preferred method of telling time. He gave Egler in Bien the largest order for wristwatches ever booked at that time. Now coming to the brand, the two men decided it would be great to create a brand name to stamp on the dials of the watches they exported, after Wilsdorf and Davis rose to fame in the British watch industry in only three short years. The industry's protocol at that time was to feature the name of the importer on the dials and movements, which went against this principle. Hans Wilsdorf ignored this once more as he imagined a different future. In 1908, he filed a trademark application for Wilsdorf and Davis Limited using the word Rolex. Well, according to company tradition, Hans Wilsdorf was riding a horse-drawn double-decker in London when a genie whispered the name Rolex into his ear. Hard to believe, right? Whether or not that fantastical story is genuine, it is true that the name Rolex was the best choice because it is simple to pronounce in many languages, as easy to recall, and most importantly, was short enough to fit on a dial next to the importer's name. Hans Wilsdorf admits that the Rolex brand didn't take off right away. At first, I dared to inscribe Rolex on one watch out of every six, in the hope that this watch would get through and be sold. In fewer than 20 years, all of the timepieces he eventually tagged with the Rolex name proudly displayed the brand. I guess you'll love to know that the very first wristwatch to get the Swiss Certificate of Chronometric Precision was a Rolex watch that Hans Wilsdorf sent to the official watch rating center in Bienne in 1910. A modest 25mm Rolex timepiece received a Class A precision rating from the British Coup Observatory on July 15, 1914. This distinction has previously only been given to marine chronometers. 
On July 28, 1914, less than two weeks later, Austria-Hungary formally started the First World War by declaring war on Serbia. By 1914, Hans Wilsdorf's London office had more than 60 employees on staff and served as the company's export hub for every market it exported to. But the British government charged timepieces a 33.3% customs duty in 1915. Due to commercial relations with Egler, Hans Wilsdorf was forced to relocate the export activities to his BN Switzerland headquarters, which were already up and running. As Rolex moved to Switzerland in 1919, it got registered in Geneva, and the same year Hans Wilsdorf opened the Rolex Geneva office as the company's only owner. After that, the BN factory served as the primary location for the production of watch movements, while Rolex watch designs and marketing were handled out of the Geneva office. From that point forward, Switzerland replaced England as Rolex's corporate headquarters. The year 1926 turned out to be very busy for Hans Wilsdorf and Rolex. He got the copyright rights to Paul Perigal and Georges Perret's winding crown system in July. This system is screwed into the case to form a watertight seal. He registered the name Oyster in the same month. He submitted a permit application for a waterproof watch case using the Perigal Perret method in October of that same year, along with numerous additional enhancements and adjustments. The first waterproof and dustproof wristwatch in history was created in 1926 and is today known as the Rolex Oyster Casing. Did you realize the progress? Well, Hans Wilsdorf had so much more on his mind. He gave Mercedes Gleitz a Rolex Oyster watch the next year while she attempted to swim the English Channel. The Rolex Oyster watch amazingly survived more than 10 hours submerged in frigid water. The concept of the official brand ambassador was then introduced when the master marketer secured the front page of the Daily Mail newspaper to declare the greatest triumph in watchmaking accomplished by Rolex. What a marketing strategy! Moving forward, the development of the first self-winding watch mechanism in the world with a perpetual rotor in 1931 marked the next significant turning point in Rolex's history. When the watch is on the wearer's wrist, the rotor works to discreetly and smoothly wind the watch on its own. The Oyster Perpetual, which continues to be at the center of nearly every Rolex watch that leaves the factory today, was created by combining the automated perpetual movement and the waterproof Oyster case. Of course, Rolex growth was rapid, and it has its own details. After completing the design for waterproof automated chronometers, Hans Wilsdorf and Rolex were ready to go and conquer the watch industry. After Mercedes Gleitz was successful in using the Oyster in the real world, Hans Wilsdorf looked for further high-profile chances to test Rolex watches in harsh conditions. Hans Wilsdorf provided Rolex watches in exchange for wearers providing feedback on the functionality of the timepieces so he could make adjustments as needed. That's testing and marketing side by side, right? Rolex Oyster watches were worn by both Sir Malcolm Campbell, the driver of the Bluebird automobile that established the land speed record of more than 300 miles per hour at the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah in 1933, and the pilots of the mission to fly over Everest. Now that was a difficult test. If you didn't know before, Hans Wilsdorf celebrated the 40th anniversary of his business in 1945 by introducing a brand new Rolex design called the Datejust. The Rolex Datejust was the first chronometer in history to show the date through a dial window rather than a traditional pointer hand. The Jubilee bracelet, a new addition, was also displayed. The Jubilee bracelet continues to be a staple in the Rolex collection, while the Datejust went on to become one of the brand's most famous watch designs. Rolex's product line quickly grew in the 1950s, with a flurry of new models created to meet a variety of purposes. This brand literally was unstoppable. In typical Hans Wilsdorf fashion, he provided Rolex timepieces for the 1953 British Mount Everest expedition. Later the same year, Wilsdorf introduced the Rolex Explorer watch in recognition of Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary's achievement in becoming the first men to reach the summit. The Submariner made its debut in 1953 as the first diving watch rated 100 meters below the surface for skin and scuba divers of the time. The Rolex GMT Master, designed for Pan American pilots to keep track of two time zones, was released in 1955. 
Two significant Rolex watches debuted in 1956, the ultra-luxurious Day-Date President for world leaders and the anti-magnetic Milgauss for the scientific community. In 1957, the Lady Datejust, a Rolex chronometer with a date window, was added to the collection. When the inventor of Rolex's beloved wife Florence passed away in 1944, grief hit. The next year, he founded the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation and gave it his entire ownership position in Rolex. If you're wondering who runs Rolex now, the Hans Wilsdorf Foundation still owns and controls Rolex, and it secretly contributes a sizable amount of its earnings to numerous philanthropic organizations. Did you know that Bertha Betty Mettler, whom Hans Wilsdorf later remarried, is said to have contributed to the creation of the Cyclops magnifying lens because she had problems seeing the little date window on the dial? Since its introduction to the date just in 1953, the Cyclops has become a crucial part of practically every Rolex watch with a date window. Even though Hans Wilsdorf passed away in 1960, his influence could still be seen in the renowned and sought-after Rolex watches, as well as the charitable activities of the foundation that bears his name. Hans Wilsdorf was a brilliant businessman and creative visionary who never settled for doing things the way they had always been done and always aimed for bigger things. He kept pushing the limits of watchmaking, commerce, and marketing, which not only led to his own tremendous success, but also irreparably changed the industry's culture. Hans Wilsdorf established one of the most enduring brands in history, along with a perpetual success symbol in the form of the Rolex watch that will forever live among us. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more intriguing business stories. See you next time.